Hi everyone, my name is Maddie, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to be torturing myself by reading one star reviews of some of my favourite books. So the bookshelf I'm sitting in front of is actually the shelf with the majority of my favourite books on it. And so this is probably where I'll be picking most of the books I'm going to read off of and I'm not going to do too many because I do actually want to like talk about the reviews that I read quite a bit because I'm very much a believer in everyone is free to have their own opinion. I don't care that much if someone rates my favourite book one star, but at the same time I want to know why. I'm very curious and kind of nervous that they're going to point something out that I've never noticed and that will make me not like the book, but we're going to get started. So we're going to start straight in with what I would probably consider sort of my absolute favourite book and that is The Night Circus. So as I said, this is probably sort of what I would consider my absolute favourite book. You can see the stupid number of tabs I put in it when I last read it. This is the copy I read most recently. And I, other than it being slow, I can't predict what people are going to criticise in this book. Just for a quick synopsis for anyone who doesn't know, this book follows two people who you first meet as children when they are apprenticed to two different magicians and basically are put into a competition with each other. However, they do not know what this competition is and they do not know who their opponent is, though it does centre around this circus which appears magically at night and only opens at night in certain areas. And this is a beautiful, romantic, lyrical, just sprawling book and it is so beautiful and I love it so much. I've read it twice, I will probably read it many more times in the future and yes I love it, especially because of the lyrical writing. So let's see if I can find some one star reviews and then see what they say. Okay so I found a one star review, I'll put it up somewhere on the screen and this is from Becky and it is long. She had a lot of thoughts about this book so let's let's just dive straight in and see what I do and don't agree with and if I can sort of understand where she's coming from or if I just get annoyed. Okay so she starts off with being very blatant in the fact that she didn't want to read this book. She had zero interest in it, wasn't going to pick it up even after hearing good reviews, didn't want to read it but then picked it up because of a book club. So although I've definitely picked up books I'm not that interested in before, lots of us have done it, I feel like she wasn't starting in the most positive place and also you know she knew the book wasn't going to be for her so it's understandable that she didn't like it. But let's see why. Here we go as she says. I don't like reading about circuses or parties or scenes of revelry and dreamlike wonder. Yeah okay it is set in a circus and that's kind of the key setting so if you don't enjoy circus settings I can see why it wouldn't be for you. I don't like reading about unrestrained, no holds bars magic that is only limited by the imagination of the magician with no boundaries or explanation. Okay, I do kind of get this. I love fantasy books, I love world building especially within fantasy books, so I do also normally like to understand how the magic system works, but for this it feels so mystical that you almost don't want to know, I felt anyway. I very much enjoyed not understanding how it worked and as she said it's like only limited by the imagination of the magician, which I think is half the fun, that's the point. They These two magicians learn throughout the story more and more different ways to do interesting things, but it is, it's ideas that come to them gradually that really form the basis for what they're doing. And I think that works really well, personally. I think if it was really limited, then it would kind of be a pointless competition. The whole point is who can stretch themselves further, not who's necessarily the better magician, but who can have these ideas and just do the best things. So I actually thought that was really clever. So I don't agree with that, but I do understand why you would possibly want more world building and more of an explanation of the magic system. I don't like endless descriptions of every effing thing ever. I love lyrical writing, but I don't normally like descriptions. I will admit, compared to most of the books I love, this one is a lot slower and a lot more descriptive. I personally adored it, no end, but I can see if you want a plot-based book that kind of gets on with it and focuses on characters and plot instead of the stunning world that it may not be for you. I can understand that, but like it makes me sad because I love that so much. <laughs> I don't like books without a point or plot or reason for existing. Okay, again, I will admit it is basically just a lyrical piece of art and it is beyond stunning. I do think there's quite a message behind it though. It's the typical Romeo and Juliet love story, which I love as a trope. So I don't think it's completely pointless. There is definitely a plot. There is not a super fast paced plot. The plot probably isn't what you'd call the focus of the book, but like there's a plot there. There is a lot going on and there is a lot to follow. There's so many different characters, so many little streams of plot, which all come together really cleverly at the end. I think it's harsh to say there's no plot at all, but each to their own. I'm trying to be very civil at the beginning. We'll see how it ends. I really don't like insta-love and completely unrealistic love will find a way stories. 
this isn't insta love at all if i'm honest i don't think maybe i disagree completely but i don't remember this being insta love at all i feel like the two characters are possibly intrigued by each other but most romances in life start with a level of intrigue if you're not interested in someone why would you ever pursue it but no i think it takes a really long time until in this book there is any form of romance forming and i would never call it insta love at all so i just categorically disagree with that categorization of the romance so no <laughs> okay i'm not gonna go through the rest of the review in detail because it's really really long we've had the summary but basically she hates descriptions there's a lot of descriptions it's not the book for her which is fair but sad because it's really good i will admit it's making me quite happy trying to find one star reviews of this because there's so few oh that's another one okay let's see Okay, so in this review, they're basically saying that they feel the plot centers on the circus, which like, yeah, that's the main setting, it's kind of in the title, but they're saying that the characters don't matter. I would say this is almost completely character driven. Like the whole point is it's a study of all these different interesting people and how they interact and how they come together to make this amazing circus. Like, yes, there's a lot of descriptions of the spectacles at the circus and the things happening there, but none of that would be the case without the characters. Like literally this book would just be a description of a circus without characters, which is fine. That's an interesting part of it, but the characters are so key. As I said, the romance is really gorgeous. There are so many other complex and interesting characters who are completely different to characters I've read anywhere else. So I think to say that this literally has no point to any of the characters is clearly someone who's maybe slightly missed the point of this book. Okay, keeping scrolling, what else? Any other one stars? Okay, one more one star, then we might do a couple two stars. Oh, no, there's two one stars. We'll do these two and then we'll move on to a different book. Okay, so Sunny has said nothing happened in this book. I feel like everyone's calling out there being no plot. There's not no plot. The plot is these two magicians in a match against each other, but because you don't know how one of them wins, because they don't know how one of them wins, I guess it can feel like the plot's not moving forward, but that's the whole point not everyone's lives is super fast paced and interesting like you're just following these people on the journey they are going through which doesn't necessarily mean it's moving 100 miles a minute that's just the reality yeah i think i, I think i just disagree with everyone saying there's no plot honestly I, I will admit it's not the most plot driven book but there's definitely a story there this may sound rude but you do have to pay attention to see the plot it's not a complex plot but there are a lot of very clever little things. There's a date at the beginning of every chapter and if you don't follow when those dates are, you will miss things because it does jump back and forth in time a bit. And it's all so important. So anyone saying there's not a plot, I can see maybe if you're just focused on the writing, you could miss some of the plot, but there's definitely a story there and it's a gorgeous story if you are actually looking out for it. Okay, so the last one star review for this is they didn't finish it because there's no plot. I think we've established a lot of people don't see the plot and that's fine, but there is one. So if you're considering checking it out, please do. There is a plot. Is it the most fast paced, exciting fantasy plot I've ever read? No, but it's stunning and slow and gorgeous. So please try it. But we're gonna try a different book now because I'm starting to get sad. So next we're gonna move on to Lainey Taylor and I wasn't completely sure which of her two series I wanted to talk about because I love both of these series, Daughter Spoken Bone and Strange the Dreamer. But I think I'm gonna, I might do both. I might do both quickly actually because I feel like this one's gonna have a lot more people not enjoying it. But this one, I'm intrigued to know what people don't like. We'll do a couple for both, why not? Okay, so we're starting with a two star review on this one just because I read this and like, I need to disagree with it. So this is from Emma, who basically says that it's not urban fantasy, it's just romance. No, it's not. Like, yes, the romance is a key plot, but like, there is no way you can say the romance is the only thing happening in this book. Just not at all. Oh my God. You don't even meet the love interest for like the first half of the book. It's not remotely just a romance. That may be key in it, but the reason it's key is actually a big plot point. It's not just cause it's a cute romance. Like there's a good reason for it to be so important. I disagree. I'm gonna see if she says anything else interesting. Okay, now she's, now she's just bashing every single YA fantasy romance from 2011, so. Okay, I mean, I guess if you don't like any of them, but you can't 
put them all under the same category, so I don't know. Yeah, she says, don't hand her a romance book. Tell me it's atmospheric, unique, beautifully written fantasy, unlike anything I've ever read or I will ever read. I wouldn't necessarily say it's unlike anything you'll ever read because that's, you know, it's a, that's a big ask, but like, this is atmospheric and is quite unique and is beautifully written, so I would hand you this and say exactly that because it falls under all of those categories. I'm really struggling to find a one star for this. There's quite a lot of two stars, but I can't find any ones. Ooh, found a one star. Okay, right, let's get into this. So they, they say that it started well, but then went really badly for them, which fair enough. I mean, it does have quite a dramatic change of pace partway through the book. So if that doesn't suit you, I can understand that. Okay, so they're saying the main character, Karu, is sort of a Mary Sue, so like the perfect character. And I can see why you'd think that. Like maybe in her description, she has quite a lot of the typical YA protagonist features that are popular, but she's also like a bit of a dick. <laughs> she's harsh, she's angry. I wouldn't say she's a Mary Sue at all. She might be beautiful, she might be talented, but that in no way means she's the perfect person. She's not, like not through any fault of her own, but she treats her friend badly and all sorts of things. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people can't see past someone being pretty to see them as a complex character. You can have someone who is stunning and talented and still not a perfect person. That's very possible and very much the case for a lot of people. So don't rule out a character as being a Mary Sue just because they're pretty. There's a lot more to it than that. Okay, so in comparison to the last person saying it was solely a romance, this person is saying the plot is too much. So safe to say, I still don't agree. The first half, I do possibly agree, could have been extended a bit in her trying to work out what she's actually doing. She collects teeth and she doesn't know why. She just knows she has to and she has to give them to someone. But if you didn't find out why for much longer, I feel like it could get boring and a lot of people would have then complained about it being slow paced. So I quite like how fast paced it is. It's like engaging and fun and yeah, again, I don't really agree, but I'm not expecting to agree with many of these because unsurprisingly, I didn't rate the book the same. Okay, I was going to move on, but I found another one that I need to comment on. So we're gonna do one more for Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which is this. They've got a list of eight things I hated about the book. So firstly, Kru is annoying. I disagree, I think she's a really interesting character. Basically, I'm not even gonna read all this out. She goes on a whole rant about how angels are holy and shouldn't be made into sex objects and aren't hot and I'm like okay and also that Akiva shouldn't be emotional over a girl because he's an angel and wouldn't worry about that and I'm like she's making him human she's giving the character emotions if you had a completely emotionless character who didn't care you wouldn't care simple as the dialogue was horrible I haven't read it particularly recently I don't remember it being horrible I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it if it was nine chapters in one day is too much well no, if a lot's happening, you have to talk about it for a while. Surely you can't just guarantee that all days are gonna only have a few chapters in them because if a lot more happens in one day than another, you need more chapters for it, maybe. Okay, so they're then saying that the coffee shop that Karu goes to a lot with her friend is lame. I don't see where that would make you hate a book. It's a coffee shop they go to. The next one, I don't know, I haven't researched this, may have some grounds to it, is basically saying that people from different cultures think of angels differently and therefore it's not believable for an angel to fall in love with a person. But although this does move settings a bit, the main setting is Prague and also this is fantasy. These aren't angels as in angels from religion, it's fantasy, so I feel like that, I don't know with that one. Next, they've said there's too many similes and like, I didn't notice this, but fair enough. If you don't like the writing style, that's completely fair. And then the last one is from like a really tiny moment. So like, er again, everyone is entitled to their opinion, say whatever they want, but I don't see why eight mainly very small plot points would be enough to make you one star a book. But if it is, then that's up to you. So next I'm going to be doing Strange the Dreamer, also by Lainey Taylor. If you couldn't tell, Lainey Taylor is one of my favorite authors. So I read this slightly more recently than I read Daughter Smoke and Bone. I adored it, no surprise there. And I feel like this one overall, more people like. So I'm very intrigued to see why people wouldn't like this one. Okay, so I found a two star review and I've not found any one stars yet. So we're just gonna start here. And this is from Alana. <laughs> okay, so basically she doesn't like that the whole book is full of descriptions, which I mean, fair. It is a slow book. 
there is a lot of description. I mean, we've just had this for the Night Circus. I like books with a lot of descriptions. Well, I say that, no, normally I don't actually, but if there's lyrical, beautiful writing, then I will get through a load of descriptions to enjoy a book. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I can see that. It is not the quickest plot. The first 80 pages, quite a lot happens in that what I knew from the synopsis, like the whole synopsis of the first book had all happened in the first 80 pages. So it does get going relatively quickly, but I can also see why you might think it's a bit slow. Yeah. So I finally found a one star review and all it says is it just wasn't my cup of tea, which that I can completely be fine with. If that is fine. If you don't enjoy it just because you don't, fine. Enjoy whatever you want. I don't mind at all. I actually can't find one star reviews for this book. Okay, we're going with another two star because this one I think has some interesting things. So this is from Kyle and basically it, it bored them. It was slow, which is fair, but they actually kind of went through a few bits they didn't like, which is interesting. So firstly, the insta love. I Again, I think it's insta intrigue, not insta love. The two main characters meet in a dream and don't realise that they're both real people at first. So I feel like it's kind of fair to fall in love with each other because like, you don't really have control in your dreams unless you can lucid dream, which cool, but it, it's a dream. Why would you think too hard about falling in love with someone you don't really know? And then when they discover the other person's real, it kind of reverts back to interest and intrigue instead of love until they actually learn about each other. So I wouldn't necessarily say it was cool that Insta love, but I can see why that sort of meeting and coming together may not be to most people's tastes. Over long and long winded. Don't think it was long winded. It's not the quickest. If you don't like a lot of sort of pointless in inverted commas description. Yeah, okay. I can see why you'd think that. Hundreds of pages of cloying sweet and sappy dialogue. I mean, the romance is cute and I like their dialogue, but I can kind of see where that's coming from. Not for 300 pages though. There's a lot of other stuff going on, but I can see it. Okay, they say that after a hundred pages, it only becomes romance. Why does everyone think these books are only romance? There is so much other plot going on. If you think a book is only romance and it is one of these books I have spoken about, you are missing the point of the book. <laughs> and like, I feel sorry for you because there's so much else good in these books. And if you can only see the romance, I am just genuinely sad for you because you are so missing out just agree to disagree, but I can see some of the things where they've come from. I'm determined to find one one star review of this book. This is both frustrating and really nice because I can't find the one star review, which I need for the video, but also everyone's giving it five stars and it's making me happy. <laughs> Everyone that's one starring it DNF'd it so early that I feel like it's not that interesting to read a review. If you've read like 50% and give it one star and have good thoughts, then fair. But if you've read like less than that, although it's completely valid, rate it however you want, I don't think it's that interesting for me to read as a review. Okay, so I've scrolled a long way and can't find a one star review. So we're just gonna pick one more two star and do that. Okay, we're going with this one. Okay, so first off, you know, the thought was very slow and it actually put them into slump, which is a real shame, but I do actually understand it. I found it quite difficult to get through when I started reading it, I did struggle. I could only read maybe 50 pages a day of this. So it is slow and I can see if you're used to reading a lot more and you're struggling to get through it, why it could make you feel slumpy. So I do understand that. It kind of did the same to me, but by the time I'd finished it, I felt really invigorated to carry on reading other things. Okay, they also say they found it hard to read, but because of the impressive amount of bad characters and non-existent plot. So I don't agree with that, especially the bad characters. Laszlo is a cinnamon roll and I love him and I will defend him till the ends of the earth. Sarai is brilliant. All the other characters are so interesting. Okay, someone's called out pacing and I do kind of agree with that. You have the first 80 pages of world building, which are interesting. And then he goes on this journey for far too long and it gets a little bit slow. And then when they actually get to weep, it gets really interesting again. So I do kind of see where they're coming from with that. And I do slightly agree, but I love it nonetheless. This person just called Laszlo lame and I'm not okay with that. Do not come for my cinnamon roll Laszlo. Okay, and then they say Minya's cool, which I agree with, Minya's awesome. But okay, I'm stopping torturing myself with Lainey Taylor because I wanna reread both of these and I don't like people not liking them and we're gonna pick something else. Okay, so the next book I've decided to read one star reviews of is Priory of the Orange Tree. I have the arc of this, which I was kindly gifted by the publisher ages ago and then I have the hardback. And the reason I've decided to do this one is because it's long. It's really long. So I feel like a lot of people aren't going to have enjoyed it almost just for that reason. So we're giving that a go. I need to reread this book. I loved it so much. I need to reread all these books. 
Okay, we found the first one star review. One of the first things they've put is pages to wasted life ratio 848 to 1. So they didn't like this. Okay, so this is interesting. The person didn't really read many reviews before picking it up, which fair, I don't always if a book sounds interesting. But they did say if they'd known it was written by the person who wrote Bone Season, which obviously Samantha Shannon did, they wouldn't have picked it up. Because I don't know if they've read those books, but they knew they weren't interested, so they probably wouldn't have been interested in this, which is fair. So pretty much this person hated every single character in this book um, for a whole variety of reasons, which, I mean, I guess if you don't like them. Um, okay. So I won't be including who wrote this review, but they've just said the two romantic subplots are not heterosexual and so I either yawned or skimmed. If you're gonna purposely skim through the romance in a book because it's not straight, why are you picking up LGBT fantasy? Like, that makes no sense. And also, unless you just hate romance as a whole, why would you skim past gay romances if you wouldn't skim past straight romances? I think it's safe to say that's not on the book. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop reading here. This person said, you know, if they don't have a good protagonist, you need at least plot or world building, and this book has neither. I just, I just straight up disagree. I think this book has all three of those things done exceedingly well, but again, we can agree to disagree strongly. Okay, so this person said they really enjoyed the first half of the book, which, good, that's always positive. But then they think that there were just too many characters and too much history and there wasn't enough time in one book for it all. Which I can see where you're coming from. I would have loved this to be a huge series and Samantha Shannon has mentioned she might be doing more in the world at a later date. But I do think there's enough space in this book. It's all explained really well. It's easy to follow who everyone is. And I actually think if they'd put this in a longer book, you would have got a whole lot of unnecessary information which would have been A, confusing and B, boring to a point. So I actually think this was a really good way of doing it. One chunky book that explains everything. And also Samantha Shannon has said this quite openly. It kind of is multiple books at once. Like it's split into sections, which is these tabs here. And those function as either long sections or chapters or just a book in itself. So yeah, some of them are quite short, but it does work really well in one book. I don't think you have to split it and double the length just to get a bit more detail because I think you have all the detail you could possibly need, honestly. Okay, we're doing one more, then moving on to the final book I have because I've been filming for way too long and if I'm not careful, this video is gonna be really long. Okay, so the first line of this is a bloated leaden behemoth lacking in any originality, character development, engaging plot or good writing. I disagree completely, but we'll carry on and find out why. Yeah, okay, they just, just didn't like it. I'm trying to find the reason why they didn't like it. Okay, so the first thing they're criticizing is that the maps aren't actually very useful and they cut off in unhelpful places. I read an arc. I didn't have maps. So yes, you may enjoy maps, but you certainly don't need them because I read this book without and it made perfect sense to me. So I don't feel like that's a legitimate reason to criticize the book. If you couldn't make sense of it without a map, then maybe, but it's an unnecessary extra in my opinion. The next thing they don't like is the writing style. They say some of it feels really sort of old and some feels really modern. And like, that's because you've got different narrators who are all in different generations. So it kind of makes sense for them to speak differently. I don't know. It certainly didn't stand out to me as an issue, but possibly on a reread, it could be something I didn't like. I don't know. Why does no one like the characters? I freaking loved the characters in this book. There's especially, I think it's meant to be said, Eid? Aid? I always say Iad, so we're gonna go with Iad. It's not that Shannon has said she doesn't mind how they're pronounced, but Iad, Sabran, and Tane, I loved so much. And everyone seems to not like them. I even like Loth, even though he's a bit, I was less interested in him. Okay, so my Goodreads app completely froze. So I guess that is telling me that we are done with that book and moving on to the final one. Okay, so I've got Goodreads to start working again and we're moving on to the final book, which is Middle Game by Shauna Maguire. And I've just seen the first one star review and it's from Natalie, who is one of my friends and we generally have similar reading tastes. So she just thought it was really slow and a character study. I mean, it's kind of a character study, but it's, it's a really interesting one. I'm gonna message Natalie later and see what she has to say for herself. Okay, this is definitely the one with the, with the most varied reviews. There's a lot of two stars in here. Oh, here's a one star. One-ish star, according to them, actually. This is fair. This person said they really like the Wayward Children books, but they haven't enjoyed any of her other writing. This is the only thing I've read from her other than Wayward Children, so I can't speak to that, but understandable. It's not uncommon to enjoy one series from an author, but not like others. Don't like any of the characters, but Roger and Dodger. 
they're amazing. <laughs> I feel like people can criticize the plot and criticize the writing and I'll be like, eh, it's not for you. But when people come for the characters I love, I am defensive. Okay, they've said something here which I actually think is really interesting. They've said they feel like it's a really basic plot premise for one person to love maths and one to love English and sort of combine their powers to save the world. I personally actually think that was a really lovely storyline. It may sound simple and it may be a thing loads of people have thought about, but it is actually a really important thing that if you have different skills, you need to learn to combine with different people. Like it's the ultimate, you can't win on your own. So trust other people and work together, which, and in so many fantasy books, I feel like there will be one person who ends up saving the day on their own. And I much prefer the teamwork element. And also as someone who grew up loving English and music and things, and also was good at maths, but my family was very much maths and science oriented. It was really enjoyable to read about these two different people and how they see the world and kind of relate that to me. I mean, I can understand that would apply to me specifically more than others, but I just think it was actually really, really nice having them, not one person great at everything, both of them having really severe flaws, but managing to fill in the gaps for each other. They have, however, said they really want to read Over the Woodward Wall, which is the fictional story mentioned in this, which is actually coming out in about a month. So yes, I also really want to read that. So I agree with them on that. And they have said they think the narration of the audiobook contributed to them not liking it. I read it physically, I don't tend to listen to audiobooks, so I can't speak to that, but I can understand why that would influence. Okay, we're gonna read this one for the last one because I've been filming for almost an hour and I need to stop at some point. And they're basically saying that there aren't really any rules to the book. And I do kind of agree with that. The magic system isn't really explained, but I didn't mind it. Often I like a really defined magic system. For whatever reason in this book, I really didn't mind at all that it was much more vague and there was a lot more sort of unknowns. Like personally, that didn't really bother me. So I don't know, but I didn't mind that at all. Um, they're also saying there was a lot of back and forth in timelines and also a lot of repetition of a lot of maths. That is true. I love the timeline jumps. I personally really enjoy seeing different timelines in books. And also as someone who was studying engineering at uni at the time, so therefore a lot of maths, I loved all the maths. <laughs> I thought that was really fun and actually tied things together really well. I don't know whether this would be the case, but for me, it actually added quite a lot to the plot and it really added a lot to Dodge's character. I don't know if someone who isn't as familiar with the maths would feel differently because it doesn't feel familiar to them. I guess maybe because I understand the maths as maths, it added more for me, but I don't know. And then the final couple of things they've said is that they thought the characters were stereotypes and so they didn't connect to them. I agree that characters shouldn't always be stereotypes, but to an extent, stereotypes exist for a reason. Like maths people tend to often be very similar people. For example, I did engineering and a huge proportion of the people on the engineering degree are the exact stereotype for what you would expect from people doing an engineering degree. Obviously not everyone, but some people fit the stereotypes and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they also said they didn't like the audiobook, which again, I didn't listen to it, I don't know. But I think I'm gonna stop there because I've been filming for ages and also it's starting to hurt me that people just don't like my favorite books. Though I will admit almost all of these were actually mainly four and five star reviews. So I'm clearly not alone in loving them. But that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm considering doing this video the opposite way around, but I don't often rate books really lowly. So I don't know which books I would bother to look at high star reviews for, but I'll have a think. I might do something a bit different for a bit of fun another point. But that is it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up and comment down below if you liked these books, hated these books. If there's any books you love that you know people hate or the opposite, I'd be interested to know. But subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me and all my other social medias are linked in the description as always if you want to connect in any other way. But that's it, so bye and I'll see you in the next one.